Hi, a short mini lecture tonight. I need to talk about call by value and a little bit more about the math methods. And the call by value, I'm going to go through the example that's in the book. I'm changing it a little bit here. So here I have a method called cube. It takes an integer number, multiplies it by itself three times, and reassigns that value. Doesn't return anything, it's void. Here inside of main, I'm going to set n to 3 and call a cube of n. And then print out what n is now. Remember that this is a copy. This n gets copied into number. That means the original n remains untouched, even though number is going to be updated to 27. And in fact, let's put that in here so we can see that, see that that's the case. And why don't we do a before and after? Start in is... So we should see at start, n is 3. Then we're going to call cube of n. And that's going to print out that the number inside the cube method is 27. Because remember, we've reassigned the parameter. And then when we come back, n will still be 3. Why? Because number is a copy of n. The original remains untouched. And that's exactly what happens. In fact, let me change this to say that n is, there we go. That the way it sort of matches. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to use that Java visualizer so that we can see this happening step by step. So let's go here. Pop that in there and let's visualize execution. Yeah. So in our main method, we're on line eight. That's what this says. And we have what's called a frame. Every time that you enter a method, you get a new frame. And we'll go forward. So n becomes three. And then we're going to print out at start n is three, which we expected. And now we're going to say cube n. Cube gets its own frame. And the number is 3 because that is the name of the parameter. This 3 in n got copied into number. Then we multiply number times number times number. It gets changed to 27. And we print it out. When we hit the end of our method, its frame disappears and any variables that that method used also disappear along with it. There's no return value here. And now we return and we're back in our main frame. And then we're at this statement. And we print at end n is 3 because, again, n has never changed. Now, the thing that I also want to tell you is that people think these names are magic. Names aren't magic. What if I change this to N? Now, this variable N has the same name as this. That's going to change everything, right? Nope. I'm sorry to tell you that won't change a thing. Let's compile. Oh, well, I give it, it gives me an error because I didn't change it everywhere. Let's compile. And let's run it. And in fact, let's change it to make it look correct. Value of n in cube method is that. Yeah. n becomes 3. Inside of cube, it's 27, but when we come back, n is still what it used to be. Just because these have the same name does not mean that call by value stops working. 
there is no mystical connection between this integer named n and this integer named n because they happen to have the same name. As I said before, these are local variables. n belongs to main, the n on line 15. The n on line 9 belongs to cube, and they are totally different. And let's prove that by looking at the Java visualizer. Let's go back here. And let's edit the code and let's pop in the one where we have n instead. And let's visualize the execution of that. And it's going to look very much the same. We start here in main and becomes three. We print out its value. Now we call cube with n as our argument. And we are now inside of the cube method and n here is in a totally different frame. This is a different n. It belongs to cubes frame. It's different from this variable called n, which is inside of mains frame. Now we've changed n inside of cube to 27, but look in main. It hasn't changed. Why? Because n, the parameter, is a copy of the argument. It's not the same as the argument no matter what its name is. Like that. There's no return value because we're void. And when we come back to pick things up, we're still back in the main frame. And the only n available to us is the one that was declared here on line eight. And that's why we see the three. So that's the big simus that I want to talk about here. That's the big deal today, is that we have call by value. Whatever you put in the argument gets copied into the parameter. Whether they have the same name or the different name doesn't matter. Changing the parameter will not change the original argument. Now, when we get on to things like arrays, which is later on in the course, you're going to see something that looks like I'm lying to you, but I'm not. And, well, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Okay, the other thing that I want to talk about, let me pause the recording for a second here. The last thing I want to talk about is some of the other math methods. We already know about root, And we know what, I don't know if I talked about it, but there's math.pow. For example, let's say I want the cube root of 1728. I say 1.0 divided by 3.0. And that's essentially 12. Now, the question is, why is it 11.999998 instead of 12.0? And the answer is because given the number of digits of accuracy that you have, sometimes you cannot get an exact answer. Now, the next question is, well, what about um, trigonometric functions like sine, cosine, and tangent? And there's something important that you need to know. Okay, we're all, I don't know if I've, we all remember it, but the sine of 30 degrees is 0 0.5. So if I say, oh, okay, let's do the math dot sine of 30.0. Well, that is definitely not 0 0.5. What went wrong? And what went wrong is that sine, cosine, and tangent take their argument in radians, not degrees. Now, what's a radian? The answer is to convert from degrees to radians, you multiply by pi and divide by 180. So let's do this. Let's put um, a double degrees is 30.0. Now I can have my double radians, and that's going to be degrees times, and it turns out that the math module also has a constant for pi divided by 180. Now if I say what's the sine of radians, I get something that's very close, again, because of the accuracy of the machine, to 0 0.5. So the moral of the story is when you have sine, cosine, and tangent, you need to convert from degrees to radians. Now, you could do it by multiplying by pi and dividing by 180. 
You can also say here is I could say have said I could have said double radians becomes math dot. Um, I hope I get this name right. I believe it's called two radians of 30.0. And that does a conversion to radians. And then I can say math dot sine of radians. And I get the same result. So math dot two radians takes a number of degrees and it gives you back a number of radians, which you can use as input to um, sine, cosine, and tangent. Tangent. What if I want to say the arc cosine, the inverse cosine of um, 0 0.5? I'm sorry, the, the inverse sine. The inverse sine of 0 0.5 should be 30 degrees. But it comes out in radians. So I have to say, take the math dot a sine of 0 0.5, which is radians, and I'm going to put that into math dot 2 degrees. I can nest my method calls. So the inner one comes first. It takes the arc sine of 0 0.5, which will give some number that's in radians. And then that will be passed to two degrees. And that will give me the number of degrees in the arc sine of 0 0.5, which is 30. And um, I don't know if you're going to be using sine, cosine, and tangent, and arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent a lot. But in case you do, remember, they're all radians, not degrees. And that's why we have the two radians method and the two degrees method so that we can do these conversions easily. And that is about all that I think I want to talk about for tonight's um, mini lecture. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for tomorrow. What I might do is I might do some of the examples in the book, in the extra exercises book. Yeah. So yeah, that might be, well, here's what you might want to do. If you want practice with methods, do exercise 4.1, the, the, this exercise 4.1, and also do exercise 4.2. I think those will be really good ones for you to practice with. Exercise 4.3 happens to be the assignment for methods, so I'm not going to do that one for y'all. Um, and then if you want a real interesting challenge, you can use exercise 4.4 to do the pay monthly payment on a loan. This one, don't write it. Don't just read the formula and start hammering away on the keyboard. Not going to work. Read the whole thing carefully and then figure out, okay, what would I have to do to be able to solve this by hand? And you might need a calculator to do this calculation of 1 plus r to the negative n. Okay, but using your calculator, we'll, we'll count that as being by hand. And then, oh, there's a whole bunch of good. There's some interesting exercises here. So I might strongly suggest that you do some of these um, exercises so that you can practice with writing methods. See y'all tomorrow.